Good morning. This recording is for Sunday, March 7th, and uh, we're excited to have you with us as you view these videos. Our subject today is going to be the body of Christ, the church. And let's, uh, we're gonna go into prayer in just a moment. A few quick announcements. <clears throat> Don't forget Sunday worship, 10 a.m. in our sanctuary, Tuesday night prayer at 6 p.m., Wednesday night Bible study at the hall at 7 p.m. And then we have coming up this month, March 18th, a Thursday night, six o'clock at the hall, special women's ministry meeting, and there'll be a guest speaker from Tulare King's Right to Life. And then also, uh, don't forget men's breakfast on the last Saturday of the month. Let's go to prayer. Our Lord Jesus, we thank you for who you are, first of all, and then what you do for us. But most of all, that you've saved us, that you've gone to that cross for us, died, were buried, and rose again, that we can have eternal life. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do today. Holy Spirit, lead us through this meeting and through this time of teaching, this time of opening up the bread of life. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. The body of Christ, that's the subject. I'll, I'll leave this up for a minute. If you have would like to send an offering or drop by the office, drop an offering by, uh, we want to put that up for a few minutes. Our subject is the body of Christ. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And the Apostle Paul, I want, I want to read this verse first. We'll open with this verse, and Lord willing, we'll close with this verse. He says, now you are the body of Christ and the members individually. It's just a short little verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, but it says it all. You are the body of Christ. All of you make up one body, but you are the members individually. And the Apostle Paul is speaking by the Holy Spirit, and he refers to the church as the body of Christ, and the church is, and he compares the church, the body of Christ, to the human body. And we'll get into these scriptures here in just a moment. The church, we've got to understand the church is not an organization. It's not a club. It's not the Elks or the Moose or, or whatever where you can join and, and, you know, be a member for a while. And if you don't like it, you just drop out and or go join another organization. The church is an organism. It's a living body. That, therefore, the, the symbolism here, the, the ex explanation, is that the church is like our human body. Uh, there are many members, many parts, but we're all joined together. We're not separate. We're, we're, all of our parts are joined together, and they function. We, we've got 10 fingers, and they function. If they're functioning normally, we can pick up things. We can... Uh, do work and so on, do delicate work with, with our fingers. But, but by, by themselves, if you were to take a thumb by itself, it, it really can't accomplish anything, especially if it's not connected to the body, it will wither and die. And this is kind of what happens to a believer when they come to Christ and they go, well, I'm, I'm a believer in Christ, but I don't want anything to do with the church. I don't want to be part of a church. Well, you'll wither, and spiritually, you will wither and die if you're not connected to the body of Christ. So the church is a living organism with all these many parts joined together and we all need each other. Even parts that are small, even parts that are hidden. Uh, one of the most significant parts of your body is your heart. It's, it's not that big, probably about the size of your fist, uh, but without your heart, you can't function at all, you're dead. We need each other. We need all the various parts of the body. So there's one body, many members, and speaking uh, of an organism, it, it is, it's, it's, it's alive. The church is alive. Christ, once you come to Christ, you're no longer dead in sin, but you're a living member of the body of Christ, and the whole body is alive. And when we, we use that form, body of Christ, it's singular, but we understand that the body of Christ is comprised of many, many members. 1 Corinthians 12. For as the body of Christ has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. 
so also is Christ. And so the apostle stresses here the many members yet one body, being many yet one body. So also is Christ. And we are all these different parts of the body, but Christ is the head. The Lord Jesus Christ is the head of the church. For by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. It's, it's the same Holy Spirit that brings everyone to salvation, everyone to faith in Christ. And, there, and we're made up of all kinds of peoples. We're made up of all kinds of nationalities, uh, different, different ethnic backgrounds, different languages, different colors. It says here, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, all have been made to drink into one spirit. In other words, we all come to the Lord the same way by the Holy Spirit. And we're, we're, we're brought to that revelation that we need a savior. We we're brought to repentance and to faith in Christ. For So by grace, through faith, we come to the Lord Jesus Christ. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. The body is not one member, but many. We need to keep this in mind. There's, there's this diversity in unity. So that, that phrase is important because sometimes we see a certain ministry that we think is really powerful and, uh, and then everybody wants to have that same ministry. Well, it's not, it, that's not the way it is. We're not all supposed to be the same ministry. There's supposed to be diversity in unity. Uh, it says... In fact, the body is not one member, but many, verse 14. And so um, let's go down to verse 15. If the foot should say, I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Uh, one member cannot rebel and say, I don't belong to the body. Can you imagine if one of your feet said, I don't want to be part of that body? Well, you're going to be crippled. You will not be able to, to function as you want if that foot decides it's going to rebel against the body. And if an ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And we can't desire to be something then other than what God has destined us to be. We have to be in that place where he has placed us. And we'll get into that later, but right now, in, in far as, as far as gifting, we all have various uh, talents and skills that we have learned in our life. When we come into the body of Christ, we can contribute, we can, we can help the church with some of those skills and talents that we've learned and we've acquired. But uh, it, it, the Lord says he wants to give us spiritual gifts. So when you, when you become a member of the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit gives you spiritual gifting. And, and we'll get into that in another study. If the whole body were an eye, where would, where would be the hearing? That would be a strange looking thing to begin with. If the whole body were one eye, where would the hearing be? Or if, if the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? So we, we all, in other words, what God is teaching here is interdependence. We all need each other. We need the Lord. We need to be part of his body. And then once we're in the body of Christ, we all need each other. One person does not have all the abilities, all the gifting. Just like the body, one part of the body doesn't have all the senses or the abilities of the whole body. So a lot of times when we're confused about something, you know, people get confused sometimes trying to understand the Trinity. They say, how, could, how can there be one God yet there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, it's real simple. Look at yourself in the mirror. In, in Genesis chapter one, God says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Well, there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but one God. Three attributes, three personalities, three parts, but one God. When you look at yourself in the mirror, and, you have, and if you have spiritual understanding, you know that when you're looking in the mirror, you see your body, but you also know that there's a soul and a spirit. There's the, the psyche, the soul. In the, in the Greek scripture, they use the word psyche. That's where we get psychiatrists. So the, the psyche or the soul has to do with your memory, your mind, your emotions, uh, your heart feelings, and so on. 
And then the soul is the deep uh, inner man, the spirit man. So you are, you are in a sense, you are body, soul, and spirit. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we're made after the likeness of God. Uh, in verse 18, it says, but now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. So sometimes we think about where we are in the body of Christ and, and oh, you know, I'd really like to be a Bible teacher or a preacher or, or, or some other, or a prayer warrior. And, and I don't really like this place where God has put me. You know, we need to surrender to the will of God. Read this again. It says, but now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. So he puts you in the church as it pleases him. He knows you better than you know yourself. He created you. And at, create, at the creation of each individual, God had a spiritual uh, plan and purpose for that individual and your, your whole makeup and your personality fits the place that he has for you in the body of Christ, the gifting or the ministry he has for you in the body of Christ. Some of you have never heard this teaching before, but you need to understand God's plan for us is, is very detailed. He knew you before you were born. He knew you before you were formed in the womb. He was involved in the creation of your very personality. He, he made you to fit the spiritual plan he had for you in the body of Christ. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? So you can't all be the same member or the same ministry. We have to have this diversity of members or the diversity of gifting to make up one complete healthy body of Christ. But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And this is the truth. Don't try to change people. Don't try to change their ministry. Don't, talk, don't try to tell them you need to do things the way I do because there's, there's diversity in ministry, diversity among members of the body of Christ. And when we use that word members here, uh, understand carefully, we're talking about the body of Christ. We're not talking about a membership role or a membership card. We're talking about physical members or parts. You know, uh, your hand is a member of your body. Uh, so we're talking about that type of member. And if, 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 if they were all one member, where would, be the, where would the body be? Now indeed there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. How many times have you heard people say, I love the Lord and I love being part of this church, but I can't stand so-and-so. Well, you gotta get that out of your heart because you can't say to that member, you can't say to one part of the body, I have no need of you. We all need each other. None of us has all the ministry of Christ. None of us has all the gifting that's required. We desperately need each other. Uh, nor again, the head to the feet. I have no need of you. So the no, members of the body cannot declare, uh, I love the Lord, I love this church, but I don't want any part of so-and-so. We can't do that. We desperately need each member. No, much rather, verse 22, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And sometimes and we're, we're, all, we're not all on the same, we're not all on the same level of growth and maturity. People in the church, some are new believers, some have been believers for many years. Some, some are new believers that are very strong and very, very, have learned very rapidly. Some are believers for many years that haven't learned much of anything or, and are very immature. So everybody's on different levels. When we come to the Lord, salvation is the same. Our standing before the Lord is on level ground. Uh, at the feet of the cross, we all stand on level ground. But in our walk, in our understanding, in our walk, in our ministry, we might be operating at different, different levels. So our standing is solid. You're just as saved as uh, Franklin Graham or, 
you know, any, any great ministry, evangelist or whatever, but your state of your state of your walk and state of your ministry can vary. And hope that helps you understand. Uh, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. Sometimes there are people in the church that you think are, are, are weak. Maybe they're quiet. Maybe they don't say something. Say, they, maybe they don't say much of anything uh, in, the, in the meetings. But th this may be the very person. Uh, I've seen little grandmas and grandpas that are mighty prayer warriors. You never hear a word from them when the whole church comes together. But they're praying for hours and hours they're getting before the Lord and they're praying for you. You might think, well, that person is not real significant in the body of Christ. And that may be the very person that's praying for what you're going through right now. You need them. You desperately need them. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. honor. On our, uh, uh, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. There are parts of the body that are, are covered. There are parts that are unseen. Uh, if, you, if you were to take your liver or your kidneys out of your body, they, they would not be real uh, pretty to look at. And they are hidden in your body, but they are very necessary. There are people in the body. There are people in the church that God uses to pray for those that come in, you know, to to help them get victory over sin and addiction and so on. A lot of times that ministry, the healing and deliverance ministry in the body of Christ is similar uh, to kidneys or liver filtering out, filtering out the sin so that person can come uh, to a, a, a greater walk and not have the stumbling that they had in the addictions and so on. And so in verse 24, says, but our presentable parts have no need. So the presentable parts don't need to be covered up, uh, but doesn't mean they're greater than those parts that are covered. You see what I'm saying? It, just because your, your hand or your arms or your, your head or your neck uh, uh, don't need to be covered up, uh, doesn't mean they're greater than those parts that are covered. And... Uh, but God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it. So God gives greater honor to those that aren't receiving a lot of honor. You know, there are a lot of people in ministry today, and they're doing this thing and, 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 they're, and that thing, and, they, and they're doing it all in their own name instead of in the name of the Lord. They're getting all their honor now. Uh, there's not going to be a lot of honor later on because they're demanding they're demanding respect and honor right now. Uh, and so the Lord says, he, he gives greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body. God, God loves unity. He does not want divisions, gossiping, tearing, dividing uh, divisions in the body of Christ, that there should be no schism in the body of Christ that the members should have the same care one uh, for one another, the same care for one another. So you, you, in the church, you really, you might have somebody that's a close friend and, or a close prayer partner or, or uh, you know, that you study together with, but you can't, you can't pick favor. You can't have um, greater care for one person than for another. You can't pick out favorites when somebody has a need, we need to pray for that person. And no matter who they are, no matter if you barely know who they are, maybe they're new to the church, but they're part of the body, they're part of you. And so we have to have the same care one for another, verse 25. And in verse 26 says it all. If one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So if if one member is suffering, we all feel for that person. We all feel their pain, and and we rush to bring comfort. If I if I if I smash my finger with a hammer while I'm nailing, 
what's the first thing that happens? You put the hammer down or throw the hammer down and you grab a hold of your thumb and you try to bring comfort to it immediately. Or if you should cut yourself, you'll take a cloth or handkerchief or whatever and wrap it and and try to stop the, the bleeding, the draining, and, 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 and bring comfort to that area that's wounded. And the same thing in the body of Christ. If, if one person is injured or if they are wounded emotionally, we rush to that member to bring comfort and prayer and love and, and, and restoration. And then the, other, the reverse of that is if someone in the body is honored, then we, we all should rejoice with them. You know, when somebody in the, uh, in the body, uh, uh, occasionally somebody uh, receives a, a great financial blessing or uh, we've had in our church, sometimes people have had a need of a vehicle and instead of getting money, somebody gave them a vehicle and we all rejoice with them. That's, that's, a, it, that's an answer to prayer. God, instead of God giving them the money to go buy a car, he gave them a car. And so we see these things happening over and over again. We see uh, church members being honored, uh, sometimes uh, politically being honored in their profession and so on. And we shouldn't be jealous. We shouldn't turn our head away and go, that's got nothing to do with me. We need to rejoice with them. We need to congratulate and celebrate with them. So if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. And then the apostle says, now, now you are the body of Christ and the members individually. Now I want to take just a moment and talk about that. Uh, a lot of people think of, as far as the body of Christ, a lot of people think, well, that's the body of Christ. One day, spiritually, we're all going to be in heaven, we'll be recognized as the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul declares, now, here and now, on the face of the earth, now you're the body of Christ. Yeah, forever you'll be the body of Christ, but now, already, you are the body of Christ. And you need to understand that you are many members fitly joined together, yet you're all functioning and working together. Uh, the human body is given as a comparison. Paul shows this with diversity of gifts, yet one body. Many members, yet unity. Each member, part, or gift contributes something necessary. Each individual member is totally dependent on the Lord and other members. I cannot do it myself. In the church, I cannot do it myself. I need my brothers and sisters. I cannot do it alone. We need each other. As individual Christians, we need our brothers and sisters. As individual church bodies, we need other Christians. We can't say, well, our church doesn't need anybody else. We need other Christians. We pray for them. They pray for us. We interact. Uh, we love each other. We, we rejoice together. Individual church bodies uh, need other Christians. Uh, we need to understand that every church has a different personality, just like all the different members of the body are different, functioning different. Every church has a different assignment. You'll notice some churches specialize in evangelism. Every church should do evangelism, but some specialize in evangelism, some specialize in teaching, some specialize in healing. Uh, some are more like a school, some are more like a hospital. Uh, each church needs to reflect the unity in the midst of great diversity, different but all moving together, different. If, get that picture of the many parts of the body of Christ. They're all different, but moving together. Each member has different giftings, so each congregation has different giftings or personalities, as we just mentioned. When the church functions as God intended, then he uses it to draw people who normally wouldn't want anything to do with church. That's why we want to function the way God wants us to function, in unity and in love, so that people that would say, I don't have any use for church, will then see something different and they'll want to be part of the body of Christ. Why does the church in America struggle with, uh, with interdependent living, with this needing each other? Because we live in a culture that insists on doing its own thing, doing it, doing it everyone doing it their own way, demanding rights and rebelling. We've got to come against this. 
This, this is our culture. This nation was born in rebellion, and um, the rebellion hasn't left yet. Uh, people still insist, I have rights, I want to do it my way. But in the body of Christ, it's different. Once you become a believer in Christ, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. You belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a wonderful thing to belong to Jesus. So minister, we, but to minister, to minister reconciliation between men and God, we have to learn to depend totally on the Lord and depend on each other. That's our mission, to see uh, men come to God, reconciliation between men and God, and then to learn to appreciate the, the diversities and the uniqueness of every member is so important. Um, the, this, this concept, we are the body of Christ now. The Lord declares now you are the body of Christ and members individually, separate parts, one body. Not one member has all the gifts. Variety and diversity operate through individuals with, with Christ as the head. Note the parts of the body don't look the same, don't act the same, yet together all that diversity makes a complete unified body, just like your human body. That's the point the apostle, speaking by the Holy Spirit, is trying to make. Every part is needed and so important. You are needed and so important. Malachi 3 and 6, uh, gifts still flow. I am the Lord. I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. God, God ordained this for the early church, and he doesn't change. What God speaks, it, it goes on forever. He didn't say, well, this is for the early church, but not for the church in the year 2021. Romans 11, 29. For the gifts and the callings of, of God are irrevocable. If God promised something, then he will fulfill it. The gifts and ministries of the Holy Spirit are for today also. I'm going to blow the shofar and then we're going to pray. Let's pray. Our Lord Jesus, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord, to pray that, and we pray that we've given a deeper understanding, that we've all received a deeper understanding of the church, the body of Christ. Lord, with you as the head and every member submitted to you and submitted to each other blessing and receiving blessing and receiving one to another i pray lord jesus for the one that is listening to this that doesn't know you as lord and savior today be the day of salvation and for the church to be encouraged and built up in the name of the lord jesus christ amen god bless you join us again for the next video on wednesday